But now I want to take um, just a couple of minutes to give you an overview of two assets that are under LOI. Um, that'll be the first two assets in the Gray Fund. We're incredibly excited. Um, it's a competitive market out there. Um, we've had to be tactical. We've, I mean, our team has been working tirelessly on filling up our pipeline. And we've had, we've had a pipeline of over $600 million this year of assets. I, probably, I think probably now close to $700 million. Um, we, we've lost out on, on the majority of those um, because we're being disciplined. We're not chasing deals. We're trying to find real opportunities where we can actually try to get some built-in equity into the deal if possible. Very little is going off market. Almost everything is going through brokers. Um, but we actually do have a project that we are getting um, off market. Is there a broker, but it did not go through the market process, which is just incredibly rare these days, because we're seeing on average 10 to 15 percent increases from the whisper prices compared to the actual contract and sales prices. And um, we pursued a portfolio recently that had a whisper price of one hundred and fifty two million dollars for the three property portfolio in Indianapolis. I think we mentioned it on the last webinar. We just got word that the event we, we backed out. Um, we, we had a line in the sand eventually is going to trade for $167 million, up again from $152 million. In the past, the whisper price, the whisper price is because most properties don't have a listed price, but the broker will tell everybody what the price is essentially. And in the past, um, really prior to 2020, most properties would sell at or near that whisper price. We bought properties in 2020 for under whisper. Um, now assets are all going Again, 10 to 15 percent over whisper. It's a very competitive market, and it underscores the importance to be disciplined, have criteria, and not to chase deals and get caught up in just in just chasing the next thing. That's why it's important to have a very full pipeline. Um, you know, like uh, like in the negotiating term, we want to have a best alternative to you know negotiated out um, outcome. We want to have an alternative, and that's why having a full pipeline, we're not so set on one asset that will do anything to win it. Because at the end of the day, if we can't perform, it, it's it's all for naught. And I told, you know, Jay Reader, who's our um, senior vice president of acquisitions and asset management, um, you know, he, he was our first employee that we hired. And I told him on the first day um, that he worked with us that I, I told him, I never, I never want to, we never will do a deal just to do a deal. We're only going to do good deals. And we're going to pass on a lot. And I'm proud to say we've done that and we're still doing that and it's time and it, but it's hard. It's hard in a market when there's so much growth, there's so much speculation, but it's just that much more important to stay disciplined. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at these two deals. Again, these are under LOI. So I can't share everything about these projects. I can't share the name really shouldn't even be sharing how many units it is. Um, but the first asset is in Indianapolis. It's in the Mount Comfort submarket. That's on the far east side of Indianapolis. It's, it's essentially right next to Hancock County. Um, it's a B-class community built in 1990. Um, 122 units total. Um, 60 of the units have not been touched at all. Um, the rest of the units are, have gone through various stages of renovation. Some just have had the, the floors done. Some have had a full renovation. It's currently 95% occupied. occupied. Way below market though, two hundred to three hundred dollars below just the market comps in the immediate submarket. And then when we're looking at um, properties that were slightly higher um, level, we believe we can get another two hundred dollars post renovation. And the previous owner has been successfully achieving these two hundred dollar rent premiums on some of the units that they have renovated. But there's still an incredible amount of meat on the bone at this property, and there's a lot of work to do, and there's a ton of opportunities to really elevate it to the next level. Um, all units have washer and dryers, 16% current rent growth going on in the area and at the property. Um, but the reason why we like this specific location in this property is the immediate adjacency to a booming industrial um, area. Uh, there is currently in Indianapolis, there's 21 million square feet of industrial being built. It's the fourth largest or the fourth hottest market for industrial development. And a lot of that is taking place just a mile or so down the road from this property. It, it's absolutely incredible. Um, I'm going to, here's some of the pictures of the classic units that will be renovating. Um, I get back, I can get back to these. These are some of the, the renovated units. See, they still, there's still some work to do. The cabinets, I think still can be replaced to really get a, an additional premium. Um, we'll go through some of the jobs and 
in this area, but the amount of industrial being built. I took the some of the team out to the submarket a couple of days ago um, because I've been I've I've been out there a handful of times. Obviously, we've toured it. We've been doing research. We live in the market. I said, but guys, we have to go over to where all, this is all being built. There is just millions upon millions that's existing, and then it's being built. And this is going to mean jobs and more jobs and decently high paying jobs that fit right in the target income brackets that we are looking for at this property. And there is no, there's no new construction in the pipeline, zero new construction on the east side of Indianapolis in this area. No new construction. Um, but we just drive around. This is just a few pictures. So, I mean, there's a ton of existing industrial um, variety of different um, types of it's mostly warehousing, logistics and some manufacturing. I mean, you've got your Amazons I and mean, Walmart has a massive multi-million square foot facility. Um, and then there's a ton that's just been built. It's leasing. Um, they have, you know, there's so much infrastructure out this in this area right now for all the construction. Um, there's now hiring signs everywhere you look. And again, they're all paying typically, you know, 20, this, I mean, this is 2640. Um, we did a survey in the area, salaries range anywhere from really $17 all the way up to $40. Um, and so just a lot of really solid jobs coming into this area again with no new supply. Um, a little bit more of just a, about just the, this, just this general area. They've had 10% employment growth over the last 10 years. And again, it's just, it's very diversified. Um, it's a very diversified employment base as well. As you can see this chart, there's really, um, there's really not the largest sector, it was only 17% of the employment base. And then you can see um, just the amount of job population growth forecast for the Mount Comfort Corridor, which is where the property is, even compared to Indianapolis, um, which Indianapolis is, um, you know, growing, you know, pretty steadily, you know, just under 1% population growth a year. This, this area is growing cl closer um, to one and a half percent and has been growing up to 2% in recent years. I did want to just to show you, I, I did a quick video while we were out touring the property. Um, again, I can't share the name of the property, but we did want to give you just kind of a quick overview, a little bit of a sneak peek of what the property looks like. Um, it's a mostly all brick exterior. Um, some of the roofs have been replaced recently, although we will be putting some of the other roofs on a replacement schedule itself. You can see it's a really nice suburban location. Um, you know, I'd say, you know, relatively blue collar and gray collar. Here's a little view of the clubhouse and an amenity space. See, there's a lot of opportunity to fix up this playground. They've got a nice little picnic area. We've talked about either adding a splash pad um, to the to this area. We've also talked about adding a um, soccer field as well. And this is a just higher aerial view. You can see um, I-70 um, just in front of us. This is a major you know, interstate that runs through Indianapolis. So great interstate access. Um, you can see a, there's an elementary and middle school just right down the street. So there's great proximity um, for families. The unit mix at this property um, really catered itself to the perfect unit mix for kind of a suburban lifestyle. It's mostly two bedrooms, three bedrooms. So it facilitates the desire for people to either have an extra bedroom or be able to have a family. But now you can look just a little bit of a far. You can see all these white boxes, all these white roofs. And that doesn't even count everything that's under construction, all the dirt that is being moved right now. And so we just want to take a little bit closer look at some of this industrial a little, about a little less than a mile away. It's incredible. Again, millions and millions of square feet, not a single new apartment being built in the submarket. There are new single family homes being built. Um, most of those are kind of in the high 200,000s up to really $400,000 range. Um, but you know, again, most individuals are not going to be able to unfortunately afford many of those homes. And then there's just this massive, um, facility. I believe this is going to be a, a Walmart um, distribution facility itself. So the return profile for asset one um, projected at about just under 10% average cash on cash over a five year period, about a 20% uh, projected IRR and a 2.3 X over five years. Um, 
So we feel as though this is a very, the risk return profile is very attractive to this asset. It's maybe one of the higher returning a assets um, in the fund, possibly not. And then this is all, we're utilizing cap rates that are well above um, the current cap rates. You know, again, most assets are trading in the mid to low fours. You know, we're assuming all kind of mid to high 5% exit cap rates. All right, asset two, a little less information on this one because it's a little bit newer. Um, it's in Lansing, Mission, Michigan. Uh, it's in the Akamas uh, submarket. And it's, a, it's 406 units. So it's a, it's a big property, major value add opportunity. It's B class built in 1989. It's currently 97% occupied. Rents are 150 to 250 below the comps. But there's a huge opportunity for a to do a high end renovation. Um, the primary reason for that is just be, the market demographics in this area are incredible. Just going to go to the incomes. You always it's you don't always see this, but you want obviously the demographics to get better closer to your property. And you can see just the median household income in two mile radius is eighty six thousand. The average household income in two mile radius is one hundred ten. You can see as you get further away, they decline. And so we're in the right location. There's a major corporate headquarters caddy corner to this property, um, and then there's a major um, well, Michigan State University is also kind of in the other caddy corner. Um, Lansing's the state capital, so we have meds, eds, lots of jobs, high incomes, and almost. I think there is 60 units currently in the pipeline for this market. So low supply, high demand, high incomes, business, tax friendly. It's really everything that we'd want to see. And it's a beautiful asset as well. Um, it does need some interior renovation, um, probably a little bit of exterior work as well, but is right down the fairway for the gray fund portfolio. profile um, a little bit less just because we, we're not really baking in um, the strong market so we're not using as low of a cap rate as we should but still strong cash flow seven and three quarters percent um, 18.7 percent projected IRR over five years in a 2.1 x equity multiple over five years itself if you'd like to learn more about the Gray Fund, um, please just pop over. You can just, just type in your browser, gray.fund should take you right there. Um, or you can go to graycapitalllc.com to learn more. And if you're already an investor, if you have a uh, profile on our investment portal, um, you can go into your investment portal right now and execute the deal documents and sign up for the fund it's, itself. Um, if you have any questions, though, or if you want to just want, me to, want to be sent the documents directly, Feel free to email me, Spencer at GreatCapitalLLC.com. Happy to answer any questions, walk you through the process. But again, to get the deck, go to Gray.Fund, gray sign up, GreatCapitalLLC.com, and log into the Great Capital Investment Portal.